The Comprehensive Guide to Halal Beyond Food and Drink in Islam Imagine you're at a bustling market in a vibrant Middle Eastern city, surrounded by the tantalizing aromas of grilled kebabs, freshly baked bread, and exotic spices. You're tempted to sample everything. But there's a catch. You're a Muslim, and you need to make sure everything is halal. It's like a culinary treasure hunt where the prize is not just delicious food, but also spiritual contentment. Welcome to the world of halal where what you eat is as important as how it's prepared, and where even your business dealings can be part of your faith journey. Please do not forget to subscribe the channel if not done so far. In Islam, halal refers to what is permissible or lawful according to Islamic law, or sharia. This concept plays a vital role in the lives of Muslims, shaping not only their dietary habits, but also their personal conduct, business practices, and other aspects of daily life. Halal is most commonly associated with food and drinks, but its scope is far broader, encompassing a wide range of permissible actions and behaviors. Halal is derived from the Arabic word that means allowed or permissible. Its opposite is Haram, which means forbidden or prohibited. These terms help Muslims navigate the moral and ethical boundaries set by their faith. To understand why certain things are considered halal or haram, it is essential to consider the sources of Islamic law, which include the Quran, the Holy Book of Islam, the Hadith, sayings and practices of the Prophet Muhammad, Ijma, consensus among Islamic scholars, and Qiyas analogical reasoning. In the context of food and drink, halal encompasses a set of dietary laws that are both specific and detailed. One of the most well-known prohibitions in Islam is the consumption of pork and pork products. This prohibition is explicitly stated in the Quran, where Allah commands Muslims to abstain from pork as it is considered impure and harmful. Another significant prohibition is alcohol and all forms of intoxicants. Alcohol consumption is forbidden because it impairs judgment and behavior, leading to actions that are contrary to Islamic values. The Quran specifically warns against the dangers of intoxicants and gambling, highlighting their potential to create enmity and hatred among people and to divert them from the remembrance of Allah. Beyond these well-known prohibitions, the concept of halal also includes the way animals are slaughtered. For meat to be considered halal, it must come from an animal that has been slaughtered according to specific Islamic rites, known as dabiha. This process involves invoking the name of Allah at the time of slaughter and ensuring that the animal's blood is completely drained from its body. The animal must be healthy at the time of slaughter, and the act must be carried out by a Muslim who is of sound mind. Animals that die of themselves are not slaughtered in the name of Allah or are not slaughtered in the prescribed manner are considered haram. These dietary laws are rooted in both spiritual and practical considerations. From a spiritual perspective, consuming halal food is seen as an act of obedience to Allah's commands. It is a way for Muslims to demonstrate their submission to God and to maintain their spiritual purity. From a practical standpoint, many of these laws align with health and hygiene principles. For instance, the prohibition of pork can be linked to health concerns, as pork can carry diseases and parasites. Similarly, the ban on alcohol consumption is in line with the harmful effects of alcohol on the human body and mind. The concept of halal is not limited to food and drink. It also extends to other areas of life, including business practices. For a business to be considered halal, it must operate in accordance with Islamic ethical principles. This means avoiding activities that are considered unethical or harmful, such as dealing in interest, usury, gambling, and trading in alcohol or pork products. Islamic finance, for example, is a field that adheres to these principles by prohibiting the payment or receipt of interest and promoting profit-sharing arrangements instead. Businesses that engage in deceit, fraud, exploitation, or unfair trade practices are also considered haram.
The rationale behind these prohibitions is to promote justice, fairness, and ethical behavior in all aspects of life. By adhering to halal principles, Muslims aim to create a just and moral society where individuals and businesses operate with integrity and respect for one another. This is in line with the broader goals of Sharia, which seeks to protect faith, life, intellect, progeny, and property. There are, however, circumstances in which consuming non-halal food or engaging in non-halal activities may be permissible. One such circumstance is necessity. In situations where halal food is unavailable and a person faces starvation or severe hardship, consuming non-halal food is allowed to preserve life. This is based on the principle of necessity, which allows exceptions to the general rules in dire circumstances. For example, if a Muslim is stranded in a remote area with no access to halal food, it is permissible for them to eat non-halal food to survive. The guiding principle here is that the preservation of life takes precedence over dietary restrictions. Despite the allowances made under extreme conditions, the general expectation for Muslims is to abide by the halal guidelines as much as possible. Failing to adhere to these guidelines can have significant repercussions, both spiritually and socially. From a spiritual perspective, consuming haram food or engaging in haram activities is considered sinful and can affect a person's relationship with Allah. It is believed that such actions can lead to a loss of spiritual purity and a weakening of faith. Muslims strive to maintain their spiritual well-being by following halal principles, which are seen as a means of achieving closeness to Allah and earning His blessings. Socially, non-compliance with halal guidelines can lead to disapproval and ostracism within the Muslim community. Muslims who do not follow halal practices may be viewed as neglecting their religious duties, and this can affect their social relationships and standing within the community. In some Islamic countries, there may also be legal implications for engaging in haram activities or consuming haram products, as these countries implement sharia-based laws to govern public and private behavior. You are again reminded to kindly like, share, and comment on the video, and also subscribe the channel. The principle of halal is not merely a set of dietary rules, but a comprehensive way of life intended to guide Muslims towards ethical, healthy, and spiritually fulfilling practices. By adhering to halal guidelines, Muslims seek to align their actions with the teachings of Islam, promoting a lifestyle that is in harmony with their faith. This holistic approach encompasses every aspect of life, from what they eat and drink to how they conduct business and interact with others. Through this adherence, Muslims aim to create a balanced and just society that upholds the values of their faith and fosters a sense of community and identity. Thank you for watching.